What's up guys, Brad here. In this video, I'm gonna hook up the PS5 to a couple of different gaming monitors, see how it plays and what the setup is like and if we can even get 120 hertz out of it. Sound good? Let's get to it. Now, before we dive in and get started, a big thanks goes out to my friend Danny, who was awesome enough to lend me his console while he was out of town. Without him, these videos would not be possible. So Danny, thank you for being awesome. Also, if you're new to the channel, I post home theater and gaming related content every single week. So please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, please check the description below for some Amazon affiliate links. I get a small commission from those and it doesn't cost you a dime and help support the channel. So thank you so much for using those if you do. With that out of the way, let's get this PS5 hooked up to these gaming monitors. All right, so here I have the PS5 hooked up to the BenQ EX2780Q. Now this is a 1440p, 144 hertz monitor, does HDR, all that stuff, and it does support input of a 4K60 signal. So I've plugged this up, I haven't changed a thing. This is just on auto. If I go to the menu here, I go down to system and we're gonna check the information on the BenQ and right now I can see we're getting 3840 by 2160, so 4K at 60 frames per second or 60 Hertz and HDR is on. Now it says my optimum resolution is 2560 by 1440 at 144 Hertz, so 1440p. So let's go ahead and go into the menu here on the PS5 and we'll see, we'll see what's going on here. Uh, we obviously know we cannot get 1440p. So we've got on the screen and video, we're going to video output, and we're going to video output information. Now, something to keep in mind here is that this display does support 144 hertz. The PS5 does not, but it does support up to 120 hertz. But you'll notice down here under frequencies, that's not listed at all. Uh, it does say HDR supported, which we know, and it's HDCP. 2.3, not really important, but 120 Hertz isn't anywhere. So what's going on with that? Uh, I'm not sure, honestly. Sony is not very open to letting you just select whatever you want. So if I come in here and I go to 1080p, we'll switch over to that and we'll see what we actually get there. So it's on automatic, uh, everything else, HDR, all that stuff. We'll go into the BenQ information again. We'll go to system and information. And yeah, we're only getting 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second, no 120. So if we go to video output information, again, if we look at all of this stuff down here, all of these frequencies, nothing mentions 120 Hertz. So I'm not exactly sure that 120 Hertz would work with this monitor. And I unfortunately don't have any games that support 120 Hertz to test this with right now. So we're kind of left in the dark. If you don't have any games to test it with, how are you gonna know? So right now, basically in this case, setting it to 1080p is really our best option. Now, obviously if we turn HDR off and you just had a 1080p 60 monitor, this is what you're gonna get. Um, you will notice it gets dimmer. That's because it switched to SDR and you know, the whole menu here in the PS5 is an HDR. So, uh, but you know, I do have a lot of lights on here because I'm recording and it looks fine. Uh, we can go into a game and it's gonna look okay. So yeah, in the menu here, as you can see, it looks about as it would just without HDR. And yeah, this looks great. Now, Days Gone is one of the games that got an update. So this is dynamic 4K at 60 frames per second, but it does look you know, not as crisp as a native 4K because we're outputting at 1080p. So it's down sampling it to 1080p and it'll do that automatically. So you just set it to 1080p and the console should reduce the output, but render the game internally at 4K. Uh, but it does look really good and it's totally playable. And let me tell you, if you have not played this game before, play it now on the PS5 if you have one because 60 frames per second is a game changer in this game, in my opinion. Uh, but if we go back into the menu and we go to home here, we go to settings, we'll re-enable 4K because again, this monitor will accept that. And if you're lucky enough to have a 1440p monitor, even, even a 4K monitor, uh, you definitely want to set it to that resolution if it allows it. And again, we can either go automatic, I'm just gonna set it manually and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on HDR as well. So automatically, you know, a brighter picture, everything. 
And this is actually a good test because, yeah, Days Gone updated. It doesn't look funky or anything like that, like, you know, the old way, or the old consoles would if you were to re-enable that stuff while you were still playing the game. So you don't need to quit out and do any of that stuff anymore. It just it just works. So, so that's a BenQ EX2780Q. We know how that works. Now let's hook it up to a 1080p 144 hertz monitor and see how that works as well. All right, so here we are on the AOC 27 G2 gaming monitor. This is a 1080p 144 hertz monitor. It does not support HDR. So what you see is what you get here. So right here on the PS5, we're gonna go back to settings, we're gonna go to screen and video. If we go to video output information, we basically just get this, HDR not supported. We don't really get more information than that. Now this is capable of 144 Hertz and it's also capable of 120 Hertz over HDMI, but we're not seeing any of that. And in fact, if we look, we're just getting 1920 by 1080 at 60 Hertz. So if we go down and select resolution, set it to 1080p, you'll see that this monitor does not support 2160p at all. We can select these other ones, but uh, we'll just select 1080p, 1080p for now. It won't change anything. Uh, HDR is already off. All of this stuff, uh, we can go in and set full if we wanted to, we'll just leave it on automatic, but we're not getting any 120 Hertz content. You know, if we go back to video output information after changing the resolution, it's just gonna say this. It's not giving us really any information whatsoever. So I don't even know if this would work here. Again, I don't have any games that are 120 Hertz or 120 FPS to test this with. I wish I did, but let's go ahead and boot up Days Gone. We're gonna see how that plays as well. Now, like I said, this should super sample down from 4K. So the game should render internally at a dynamic 4K and then output it to 1080p. So we should get, a, we should still get a cleaner image overall than if we were to just, you know, be 1080p straight up like we had a regular PS4. So it should look better than that. And it obviously runs at a much higher frame rate. So 60 frames per second. All right, yeah, we're here in the menu and again, it looks identical almost to the BenQ set to 1080p uh, with no HDR. All right, and we are here in the game and yeah, it looks really, really good actually. Um, you know, it does look super sampled. So we're getting that 4K image rendered internally and output at 1080p. So it does look a bit crisper and a bit sharper and it obviously runs at 60 frames per second, which is like I said before, definitely a huge bonus. Now, like I said, this does not have any type of speakers or anything in it. So you'd have to get some type of headphones or something like that, or even earbuds plug into the bottom of the controller. That would work too. Uh, but this is totally playable. Uh, is it ideal? Are you, are you getting the maximum? I can't drive. Are you getting the maximum potential out of your PS5? No. In order to do that, you need you know, a 4K display or monitor or something that would support that as well as HDR and 120 Hertz. Now you can get by with 4K 60, that would be a definite upgrade from this, uh, but you're not maximizing the potential. However, it is totally playable. It doesn't look bad at all. It actually looks really, really nice. And if you were looking for a cheap monitor, you know, definitely you could go 1080p at 60 or 120. I don't know if 120 would work, I haven't been able to verify or test that, so keep that in mind. Uh, but this totally looks good. So we hooked up the PS5 to both of those monitors and we got the results that honestly I figured we'd get. So we couldn't force 120 Hertz at all. Sony locks that out. We didn't really get any information from the video output information that would help us. And we didn't even see that 120 Hertz was supported within that menu. Now, I haven't really done much research into this, uh, and I don't know if other people are experiencing the same thing or if you know HDMI 2.1 is actually required to get 120 Hertz at all over HDMI for the consoles at least, which would honestly be ridiculous because you can get 120 Hertz over HDMI at 1080p and 1440p on a computer monitor through a computer. So it should be possible. And honestly, the Xbox Series X and even Series S does it and allows you to select that refresh rate within the system menu. So it, I don't know if it's an oversight on Sony's part, but they really should, and maybe in a future firmware update, 
we can have them at least add the function to select 120 hertz output regardless if a game renders at 30, 60, or 120. We should have the console output at that refresh rate and then it could just display those frames numerous times in order to get there. It won't benefit really from 120 hertz, but we wouldn't have to keep changing it or it wouldn't have to you know, go back and forth automatically. Then it would give us more control. So testing these two monitors, would I recommend either one for the PS5? I would honestly say hold off if you can, just because you wanna make sure that the PS5 can actually output 120 frames per second to those monitors. Now, as it stands, you know, if you're in the market for a budget 1080p monitor and you need one like right now, well then you're just gonna have to bite the bullet and accept whatever fate Sony decides if in fact, you know, 120 frames per second or 120 hertz is supported on those monitors. Like I said, we didn't see it from within the PS5 video output information. So I'm not even sure if it would work. Again, you're kind of buying at your own risk right now. Now, however, I will say, you know, they looked good. Both of the monitors look good. I would give the edge to the BenQ as that accepts the 4K 60 frames per second signal and then down samples that to 1440p. So the image does look a little bit sharper. Actually, it looks quite a bit sharper than the 1080p AOC, but you know, it's not extremely night and day. Now, the BenQ does support HDR. So that's another plus, and it does look really good, especially now that the PS5 has that built-in tone mapping at the system level. I'm not sure if all games support that, but it's a nice feature to have. However, that BenQ monitor is pretty expensive. It retails for around 600 bucks. Whereas the BenQ 1080p, it still looks adequate and it would definitely do the job, and it's around $200. So if you're on a budget and you need something cheap and want like a bigger monitor, the 27 inch AOC 27G2 would definitely be probably your best bang for the buck right now. Um, you could also look at the BenQ EX 2710. That also supports HDR as well. It's 1080p, 144 hertz. That one retails for about 300. So again, if you're in the market and you really need one right now, you're kind of going to have to accept that right now we may not be able to get 120 hertz to those monitors through the PS5. Now, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful at all, please give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you appreciate this type of content. Also, if you have any questions about the monitors I tested or the PS5 or home theater and gaming in general, please leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it when I can. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.